some people will die young. Uh, so even if we ex uh, extend life expectancy, there'll still be tragic deaths of infants and younger adults. There'll be accidents. There'll be early onset cancer of different kinds. But, but life expectancy is likely to rise towards 100. And the newborn uh, children in the major European countries, most of them are likely to celebrate the 100th birthdays. But a lot of them will not. And some of them will live to 105, 110. And the, the European countries, uh, it's fairly uniform. The, the uh, French do exceptionally well. And the Italians, and uh, also in Spain, there's very high uh, life expectancy. The, um, the Dutch and the Danes don't do as well as their neighbors, the Germans and the Swedes. And of course, the Russians, life expectancy is 10 years lower. It's hard to live a long time if you're sick. So, so the healthy span of life is going up with the total span of life. And uh, there's still a period of, for many people, of five years, 10 years, sometimes of disability at the end of life. But the period of healthy life is, is increasing as life expectancy increases. So you shouldn't think about living to 100 and being as sick as 100-year-old people currently are. You should think about living to 100 and when you get to 100, maybe having the health of a 70-year-old today or a 75-year-old. Uh, it's difficult to work if you're not healthy. So people who are not healthy tend to retire earlier. So it's hard to know whether health is improved because you work or it's just an artifact of the fact that sick people retire early. But so far as uh, you can investigate this question, it appears that working is good for your health and that um, getting out and talking with people, moving around, getting some exercise, getting some fresh air, uh, feeling like you're making a contribution to society, that you're not a drain on society, but you're adding something. All these factors seem to improve health. Retirement age probably made sense 100 years ago, even 50 years ago, but now people are much better educated than they used to be, and there's a much greater diversity of occupations, uh, so that people should be given more flexibility. And it's true that some people start work when they're 16 or 18 and have very difficult manual jobs, blue collar workers, and they should have an opportunity to retire younger if they are no longer able to do what uh, they've been doing for 50 years. On the other hand, other people have much easier jobs. And some people start work late, maybe a woman who has children then starts a career after having children, or maybe a man who has one career and then changes to another career. And so these people should be given flexibility and allowed to work longer if they would like to. So, so my general feeling is that they should be Given the fact that we're so educated today and given the fact that there's so many different kinds of occupations, it's important to have flexibility in the, in, in the age at which people uh, retire. And, the, and that the, uh, the other main tendency that I see is that uh, if people are, live 100 years on average, they're not going to want to retire at 60. I mean, who wants to have 40 years of enforced leisure? I mean, so, so that the people who want to work longer will want to have uh, spread work out of more years of their life. But what that means is that they can work fewer hours per week. To, what you have to do is work a certain total number of hours to make a contribution to society big enough to support yourself. So, so that if you work more years of life, you can work fewer hours per week. And my ideal would be that people on average work 25 hours a week, but they work until they're 75 or 80. And some people might work 20 hours a week, and some people might work 30 hours a week. I'd work 40 hours a week. But, but, the, but, the, uh, but this would give people a chance to spend more time with their children, to, to, to spend more time with their friends and families, to spend more time on hobbies and leisure activities or education, further education. So give people more flexibility by reducing the burden on younger people and asking older people to contribute more. Okay. Yeah, so the, uh, there's a total amount of work that has to get done. What you can do is have this work concentrated on people between 30 and 50. Well, you can spread the work out and have people in their 20s working, you know, going to school part-time and working part-time, have people in their 60s and 70s working. And as long as the same total amount of work gets done, the economy will be the same size. Now, there is a question about whether older people can do the same kind of work that younger people do. Now, it's hard for older people to move pianos. You know, there's certain kinds of hard work that older people can't do, but there's not many occupations anymore that require muscles. Most occupations today require brains and also um, an ability to get along with other people. And older people have an ability to get along with 
other people. They have experience. They have wisdom. And most jobs uh, can be done by older people just as well, if not better, than by younger people. So I don't see that as a problem. You can also look at it in terms of income transfer. So you can look at how much money younger people have to make in order to pay the taxes they have to pay to support the older people. And if you do that, if, if more people work, then taxes will be lower. You can keep more money for yourself. If, if there's a husband and wife, and in Germany today, very often the husband works 40 hours a week and the wife doesn't work at all. If one of them worked 20 and the other worked 20, you have 40 hours. So, so it's possible. There's some evidence that older men who have never married or who are divorced and never had children or who don't talk with their children anymore, so lonely older men, some of them are very selfish. But in general, older people are very altruistic, more altruistic than younger people, uh, especially older people who have uh, children and grandchildren, or maybe they have nieces and nephews and so on. So older people have some connection to younger people tend to be very generous, more generous than younger people. Younger people are trying to make it, you know, trying to have their own careers, trying to make their income. Older people are past that, and they, they're willing to help younger generations. So, so I don't see, except for these selfish old men, I don't see much of a problem.